In the vast tapestry of the Manichaean universe, mighty powers reign supreme, transcending human comprehension in the realms of both radiant light and profound darkness. These forces hold mysteries that stretch far beyond the grasp of mortal minds. Consequently, the presence of humanity before the Manichaean god pales in comparison. However, as the final chapters unfold, spirits who navigate the path to the new paradise, guided by divine messengers and the Prince of Light, are embraced by the luminous realm where eternal bliss awaits their arrival. If you're watching a video from our channel for the first time, click the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it to receive our upcoming YouTube videos sooner. Mani is the messenger of light, with the title Seal of the Prophets. He believed that by accepting his religion, people would pave the way for the victory of light over darkness and free the fragments of light that had become captive to Ahriman. These lights, much of which are trapped within humans, are fragments of the children of Hurmazd Bagh, who is considered the first complete human in Manichaeism and the child of the Mother of Life. He is the primary ruler of a world called the New Paradise and the host of lights that manage to find salvation from the material world, reaching the New Paradise through the path of the moon and the sun. Every time sorrow comes to you at sunset and you feel lonely, know that the light within you longs for its original homeland and is distressed by missing the opportunity to join the sun and reach the new paradise. Every Persian poem and ode that delves into the captivity of souls or the veil of the body finds its origins in Manichaean ideology, serving as enduring symbols of resilience amidst the suppression imposed by dominant monotheistic religions. These literary expressions bear witness to the covert preservation of Manichaean beliefs over an extended period, defying attempts to extinguish their influence. In the narratives we have reviewed so far, it was mentioned that the fragments of light, imprisoned in this world by the darkness, are indeed the children of Hermazd Bag, who, after his defeat by the forces of darkness, became captive to Ahriman. But in some discussions mentioned in this book, we have a different narrative that Hermazd Bagh intentionally abandons the elements of light, which are compared to his children, to confront Ahriman's army and prevent their advance towards the world of light. So the demons got busy consuming these elements and preventing them from advancing towards the world of light, meaning that the light we have in this world, much of which is within humans, is sacrificed by Hermazd Bagh to protect the world of light a decision that has become the cause of the sorrow of the captive lights in this world and manifests itself within humans as a sense of longing and distance from an unknown person or place. That person can be Hermazd Bagh, who is the father of lights, and the unknown place can be the world of light, which is their motherland. Manny's narrative of the end of the world has images similar to most apocalyptic narratives. A bloody battle erupts across the world. A period of turmoil, bitterness and the decline of faith that follows the second coming of Jesus. He who establishes his throne of justice and separates the righteous from the wicked. If you've seen the video related to the creators of The Matrix, you're familiar with the children of Mary Zad. Mary Zad, the greatest force in the Manichaean creation narrative, is called upon to command the Army of Light after the defeat of Hermazd Bagh and his captivity in the Dark World. He not only saves Hermazd Bagh from captivity, but in his second wave of attacks, he liberates a significant portion of the lights that were imprisoned along with Hermazd Bagh. He captures the demons of Ahriman and chains them in the sky. Then, along with the Mother of Life, designs and constructs the material world. Their ultimate goal is to create conditions for the liberation of the remaining imprisoned lights from Ahriman's grasp. Important parts of the realm they create are entrusted to the five children of Merizad. For example, for the liberation of some lights that are still imprisoned within the demonic forces, 
three wheels of fire, water and wind are created, and Zanbaud, one of the children of Merizad, is responsible for guarding them. Darbaud stands as the king of the first heaven among the ten mythical heavens, and Marsbaud is the king of the seven lower heavens. One of the children of Mer Izad, named Vase Baud, stands in the middle of the cosmos and guards it. Meanwhile, Maunbaud stands on the fifth earth out of the eight mythical lands of Mani and supports the three upper lands on his shoulders. When the appointed time of the end arrives, all these children of Meherizad abandon their duties. The heavens and the earth and the entire material world, which existed by the authority of these gods, collapse and disintegrate, while a great fire ignites throughout the universe, which will burn for 1,468 years. The last fragments of light are also freed by this fire and ascend towards the new paradise in a group called the Last Deity. At this stage, Merizad, who is referred to as the Living Spirit in some writings, will once again be the Commander-in-Chief of the Army of Light. He can defeat one of his most important enemies, called Dark Thought, and once again chain the forces of darkness. Finally, he imprisons matter, which is a metaphor for Ahriman and his forces, and seals the entrance to this prison in a way that they can never escape and will remain in captivity forever. With the victory of Meir Izad, the universe returns to its original state before the attack of the dark forces. That is, everything separates, light from darkness and spirit from matter. The inhabitants of the new paradise become residents of the land of light, and everyone, from the gods and soldiers of light to the fragments of light that were present in humans in this world, can see the face of the Father of Light, hidden from them, since the beginning of the battle against darkness. And they eventually reach the reunion with the original light, after thousands of years of separation. However, while most versions of Manichaean apocalyptic narratives have a happy ending with the reunion with the world of light, in one of the versions discussed in this book, we have come across a dark point. Despite all the efforts of the forces of the world of light, some fragments of light do not find an opportunity for liberation. The main reason for this is their despair of salvation and liberation. That is, souls who have no hope of liberation from the material world and do not strive for it. They will remain with the forces of darkness forever after the end times. So, in Manichaean belief, hope for salvation is of great importance for the eternal liberation of the lights. Another point in this narrative is the type of reaction of the forces of light to the bitter fate of the imprisoned lights in hell, which again in two series of writings is completely different. In the writings left by the Manichaeans of Egypt, the gods and the rescued lights mourn for the lights that remain captive. But in the texts recorded in ancient Persia, no grief or sorrow of the forces of light is mentioned, and even this explanation is given that these forces have no regret for the damned, and sorrow does not find its way into their hearts. Not because they don't care about it, but because fundamentally, the forces of light do not have the capacity for grief and sorrow, and their nature is created from joy and happiness, at a level that, even when they are in the turmoil of battle and hardships, they are inherently happy and do not worry. Certainly, if you've watched the previous videos about the way Manichaean teachings are preached, you know that its preachers were allowed to change parts of the mythical narratives and creation stories based on the beliefs and lifestyle of their audience. And these differences regarding the reaction of the forces of light to the imprisoned lights in hell can be one of these cases.